Hey everybody, welcome back. On today's video, we are talking through a full step-by-step -step how to set up your GoXLR Mini for a two PC streams configuration. Stick around and we'll show you how it's done. All right, first things first, let's talk about what you're going to need for configuration. First thing is some aux cables. You need some male-to-male -male aux cables at a minimum two, but if you're using a USB microphone, you will need a third. Get two to three cables, make sure they're long enough to connect between your two computers. And for the third one, make sure it is long enough for your microphone to your actual GoXLR Mini. Now, other than aux cables, when we talk about microphones, there are two basic types you can do. An actual XLR microphone like this pod mic here, that's what most people will probably be using if you are buying something like the GoXLR so that you can utilize the XLR function. But if you just have gotten your device and you don't have the money to upgrade to an XLR mic yet, it's perfectly fine to use something like a Yeti that is a USB device as long as it does have the actual headphone adapter. You have to be able to have the headphone jack out from the microphone because this is that third aux cable that you will be running from this microphone directly into the mic input on the front of the GoXLR Mini. Lastly, if you don't have a microphone like that, you can actually just use a headset with a microphone here. And if you notice from the actual outputs, what you will have is you have your double output, which would be the headphone and the mic. You would plug these both into the front of the Go XLR Mini so that you could utilize this as a microphone until you upgrade to something like the Blue Yeti or an XLR mic like this pod mic. The last piece you're going to need to be purchasing is something called a ground loop isolator. I bought mine off Amazon for roughly about $10. I've left links below in the description. Make sure you click through those and support the channel. But this is very important when you are doing a two PC stream setup because when you're using the two different computers going through the actual GoXLR Mini, there's a good chance of feedback or noise. And this right here will actually isolate that for you and remove the noise from coming through either the stream or your headphones or both. All right, before you get started, make sure you download and install the actual GoXLR app. It lists it in the instructions, or if you Google it, you can pretty much find the link there as well. It's the same app utilized for the mini or the full size. Do that first, then we'll actually go through and connect all your devices. And thirdly, we'll go actually configure the app so that it's set up and ready for you to use. The first thing we'll want to do is actually look at the back of your device. And what you'll see is there's your XLR port. So if you have an XLR mic, you'll plug one end, of course, into your microphone, the other end right here into the only XLR port into the back of the actual GoXLR. Otherwise, if you have a standard USB microphone, if you look here on the front, there's the two ports on the very front of the device, one for headphones, one for microphone. What you will actually take is take out the bottom of your USB microphone, plug it into that port there, and then plug the other end of one of your actual um, aux cables into the front of the GoXLR Mini, and that's all you have to do. Next is going to be getting your computers plugged into the device. I recommend plugging the actual XLR, running this off of your gaming PC, the one that you're mainly gaming from. This is where you will also use your Discord on. This is where you would also use your music from if you're using Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, whatever it is you're playing your audio from. That's where you will control all of this from. And then what you'll be doing is running the single line out over one of the aux cables from the actual line out you see here on the back of the device into your actual line in on the streaming PC. So cable one is going line out on the back of the actual GoXLR and run your other end into the line in on your stream PC. Next is actually connecting the stream PC back into the GoXLR. And this is only really utilized for your stream alerts or other things of that nature that you're wanting sound coming from your stream PC and being able to use it in your single headset that's running off of the GoXLR. This is where you will take your other aux cable, run it out of your line out or speaker output on the back of your stream PC, and then you'll want to run your other end through the actual ground loop isolator. So you'll plug it just directly into the isolator and then you'll plug the isolator into the line in on the back of the GoXLR Mini. All right, so we're about halfway done. We've set our microphones up and we've connected both PCs. Now you'll notice there's just a few ports left. First is the USB. That one's simple. 
you'll actually plug in the supplied USB cable from the GoXLR Mini into your gaming PC because again, that's where we're gonna be connecting this device from. Next to the USB port is the optical port for a console. If you use a PS4 or Xbox One and you're wanting to mainly stream console gaming or, you, or sometimes stream console gaming and you want the audio running through this, you'll supply an optical cable from your console to this device as long as your console has that port option. And then last thing but not least is your headset. Plug your headset from the actual headset port on your, on your headset into the front that has the headset jack right beside the microphone jack that we referenced earlier if you were using a USB mic. And after that, everything's plugged up and now we're gonna dive right into the app. All right, so now that we're loading into the actual GoXLR app, there's a few things we're gonna go over. The first is your profiles. So if you actually look in the top left side over here, you'll see profiles. There's a few different options for colors. That's the main difference. If you had different settings you wanted for different games or when you're streaming versus recording or podcasting or whatever, you could make a different profile for those settings and it would preload them separately whenever you double click and select that profile. I chose one and I renamed it to main. The only other one that I actually use is typically sleep. If I know I'm not gonna be using the GoXLR for a period of time, I will change it to the sleep mode. All the lights shut off, it kind of turns it off in a sleep mode. Um, and it. I think it makes it last longer, hopefully. But other than that, I just use the one main profile. I'll configure that and we'll go through those configuration settings. Um, but we, we set that up that one time and it pretty much covers all of my needs that I've had so far for it. Now that we have our profiles figured out, we wanna move on down onto the next settings. The first of which is microphone. If you see the button on the very left, it's called mic setup. Let's click on that. Now under mic type, there's three variants that you can pick from. The biggest differentiation is either the XLR or the three and a half millimeter jack up front. As we mentioned something like the Yeti, that's a USB mic or any of those others, as long as you're using that three and a half millimeter adapter, you'll need to pick that option here. That is where it will turn on that front option as opposed to the XLR in the back and it will let you set up the further settings beyond that. If you have an XLR mic like this pod mic here that's a dynamic, select dynamic. If you have any of the other XLR condenser mics, choose that. Next step is setting up the gain. You wanna push the slider all the way up to 100% so you're maxing it out. So that way when you fit your gain setting, you're not gonna have it too high. And then when you push the slider up to 100%, you would blow out somebody's ears. The first thing we wanna do, push that slider all the way up and then adjust your gain so that you're fitting somewhere right in the middle of that good section. If you notice, I don't have my microphone at 100% right now. That's why I'm falling below the good variable sometimes, but it's perfectly fine. Push it up to 100%, hit your gain setting the way you want, and then select OK. Once we have our mic selected, and now that that's set up, we have three other options that we have for mic control. Number one is noise gate, the second is the equalizer, and the third is the compressor. So let's set up the noise gate first. The first two listings here are the two most important. One is threshold, second is attenuation. The threshold is at what point the noise gate will actually turn on or and or off, okay? The second is attenuation. This is when the noise gate turns on, so when it's shutting down your microphone because it's not enough of a threshold, it at what percentage do you want it turned on or off? If you notice, mine's at 100%. So basically what this means is if the sound coming to this microphone is below 45 decimals, it will 100% be turned off. Once I cross that threshold is when it will actually turn on the microphone and it will pick up my voice. Now this is very important because you don't want the keyboard sounds, you don't want the fan in the background, all that background noise if I'm not talking, my mic is turned off. But I want the threshold low enough so that no matter what I'm saying, if, as long as I'm talking into my microphone, it will actually pick it up. What you'll notice if your threshold's too high is that your, your voice will be cutting in and out. So if you're talking, at a normal pace, if you're talking not too loud or too soft, but you kind of hear it going in and out, adjust the threshold a little lower so that way you can actually pick up a little more sound so when you're talking softer, it will come through. This is something that is definitely personal to you. You need to adapt it to fit your voice and your situation for whatever amount of background noise and such you have. So adjust your threshold, push that attenuation up to 100%. If for your personal preference you wanna change that, you definitely can. I recommend 100%. 
And then the attack, I have this as fast as it will go, which is scrolled down. And then the release is how long that noise gate lasts and remains open until it checks again to close itself back off. Mine's set for 650 milliseconds. After the gate is the equalizer. This again is something personal to you. You can leave it as default, which is coming standard off of the machine, or you can adjust it to your voice, whatever you feel like sounds best. My voice, I think, has a little bit extra low tones to it, so I've dropped down the actual lows here, as you'll see, and I've pushed up a little highs to balance that out. You can, by default, only have the three, but if you wanna go a little bit more in depth, click that arrow, it'll give you actually six boxes to choose from, and you can adjust the equalizer as you see fit. The last mic setting that we have is the compressor. So what this is for is this is to save your, your audience's ears if you end up raging or screaming. You don't want it to go way peaking high. So what it'll do is it'll compress those extremes into a normal range. And so you first have the threshold. This is very similar to the noise gate. This is at what point you want it to kick on. Mine is set to 20, negative 25 decimals. When it does kick on, at what ratio are we compressing? I use a 4 to 1 ratio. Again, I have my attack pushed way down. My release here is set at about 140 milliseconds. And then my makeup gain is set to eight. You can play around with these settings, get the sound that you want, but you can use mine as a good starting place. Now that we've figured all the mic settings, let's jump on over to Mixer. What you'll see here is it's gonna have your four channels listed here, which corresponds to the four sliders on the actual deck of the GoXLR Mini. Your, your labels at the top cannot be edited. So what I've done is I personally use the same four things as it's listed. But the cool thing is, is you can actually adjust it to whatever works for you. For example, as I mentioned earlier, if you are a console gamer and instead of using music, you want to actually be able to control the console volume. What you can do is you could select channel three, which you'll see here highlights the music slider and you could change this to console. And so what this will actually do is instead of controlling the music option, whatever's plugged into that console outlet out the back of the device, you can now control that on the third slider. You'll just have to remember it is actually console instead of music because you can't change those labels. Maybe use some electrical tape or something similar on the top. Now, after you have your four channels selected, you make sure your sources are accurate to what you want them to be. And then what you'll have are the mute options and then the mixer out from that. The mute options are when you press the actual four mute keys down below the sliders, what you'll see are these four here. What do you want it to do? Do you want it to mute everything? Do you want it to mute it to the stream? Do you want to mute it to voice chat, mute it to your headphones and or the line out? So you can adjust what mute option is actually happening when you press that key and you can adjust it per slider. It's not a whole device setup. Other than that, you do have this little, I call it the cough button down at the bottom. This last one, you don't really adjust. When you're holding that one in, it mutes everything um, from your microphone, just so that way, if you're coughing, if you need to hold it while you say something, no sound from your microphone's going through to any of the channels. That's what that's for. The other button here is the bleep button. You can actually adjust the volume of the bleep button down here in the mixer setting, um, as, with the, as with some of the others, like the line in um, and your headphone channels out to the end. I do like having my microphone come through my headphones. If you don't want that, you can actually adjust it down and or adjust the level of headphones that you have, um, the sound coming through once it comes through your actual mixer. Now, after all these mixer settings, we have the routing. The routing is where it gets fun because the cool thing about this GoXLR is it has this neat little table here that allows you to specifically pick what's going where. Okay, so for mine, I have my line out is actually what's running from the gaming computer to my streaming computer. And if you've set yours up as I've gone through this video, yours will be the same way. And so what you can choose is on your line out, what do you want going out to that stream PC? So for mine, I have my microphone, I have my chat, my music, and my system. So basically what's on my four sliders, that's what's going back to my stream PC. The other thing is you can choose what plays in your headphones, so if you don't want your microphone going into your headphones, you can actually unselect that here and it would turn that off. Same as for your chat mic, if you want it going to the music or whatever you might want it to be, select those options in this table below and that's what will adapt the routing automatically for it inside this app, which is super cool. 
Last but not least is the system setting. What you'll have here is a little bit more background information, some about stuff, some settings, analytics, all of that, and you have the lighting. So if you come here to lighting, you can adjust the accent lighting that you haven't adjusted here under the mixer tab. So these two sections are where you can change the lighting to see fit whatever colors you want on the sliders, on the bleep buttons, on the accents, the actual cough, um, all those different buttons and the full global button. If you notice, I've actually set all of mine to blue. That's just my preference. If you want different colors to help for whatever reason you want, you can do that here under these settings. All right, now we've plugged our device completely in with all of our cabling. We've gone through the app and fixed the routing and our mic settings. All that's left now is to actually fix on the back end where all the sounds are pointing to. So what you need to do is go to your system sound settings. So open sound settings down in the active toolbar and you'll come here to the sound screen. What you'll notice is on your output device, if you choose that drop down box, what you have here is the system, you have music, you have chat, um, and all these from the GoXLR Mini. Now these are matching what's on my board here, if you notice that. So the one that I want to control as my main output from this gaming computer is going to system. And again, that's going to correspond to that system slider that I had. Next down below for my input, I want my microphone what's coming out of the GoXLR to be my chat mic in the actual input for this computer. So that means if I'm playing a game on this computer, it's gonna run through this mic here because that's the mic that's, that's fed through the system. So if you notice here, choose chat mic from the GoXLR Mini. Now, the last two that are left is chat and music. How do we set those up? Chat's simple. You're going to want to go into Discord and choose your actual output device to go through chat um, which you'll find listed there as well. Let's go take a look. All right, so I've opened up Discord here, and where you'll want to go is the actual user settings down in the bottom left. Select that, and then if I go here under the actual voice and video, what you'll see is I have an input device and an output device option. My input device, again, I want to select the chat mic, same as what's under my system settings, and then for my output device, I want to choose the chat option. Because again, what this will do is this now sets up the chat slider as being the control for my Discord, you know, party chat. So when I'm in a when I'm in a live voice room, when I have my party chat members talking, I can adjust that slider so I can adjust their voices live on stream or when I'm recording or just if I'm playing to be able to hear them louder or softer, it puts them on their own slider just for the output of Discord. Now let's hop back over to the sound settings so we can look at music. All right, last but not least is music. And this one's actually somewhat tricky. So I'm going to be using Spotify. If you have any other music app that you want to utilize for this slider, you can do that instead of Spotify. But for my example, I will be using Spotify. Now the trick is to get it to actually show up in the app system, you actually have to have Spotify open. And I recommend having it actually playing a song as well. Mine's muted in the background, so that way you don't hear it over this audio right now. But now that I have it playing, what you'll do is from the sound settings, scroll down and you'll see an advanced sound options and it's the app volume and device preferences. Select that now. Because I have it playing and it's actually running in the background, you see Spotify listed here. And what I can actually do is instead of it going as default, now keep in mind default is this system option up here, which is my system slider. I don't want it going to the system slider. I want Spotify to go through my music slider. And so what I will do is on my output listed here, you choose the drop down and change it from the default, which would be going to the system down to the music option. And so whatever I have now listed to this music is what will be controlled on that music slider. And by doing this, now all four sliders should be accurate. My mic will control my microphone. My chat is running through Discord. My music is selected straight to Spotify and the system is going to control the overall output coming from the actual game PC. And just like that, we're done. Hopefully this answered every question you have about the GoXLR Mini and getting it set up so that way you can create some awesome recordings and or streams. If you happen to have any questions though that we haven't answered already, please leave them in the comments below and we will do our very best to get back to you on those. If you did like the video though, please smash that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so that way you'll catch us on the next video. Thanks so much for making it this far guys and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.